The true point guard, Stephen Curry, just inspirationally fought through an ankle injury and reminded the world why he's the best player in these NBA Finals on Friday night, joining Jerry West and Magic Johnson as the only point guards ever to record a 40-point, 10-rebound Finals game. Absolutely carrying the dubs with a 43-piece, his second most ever in a Finals game. We're now going back to the Bay Area tied at 2, as the Warriors have taken back home court advantage and stunned Celtic fans. This video breaks down Game 3 of the NBA Finals, focusing on how Stephen Curry put the Warriors on his back and willed them to a dub. Before continuing, only 12.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. In undoubtedly the game of the finals, a back and forth clash ultimately showcased the endurance, composure, confidence, and all-time greatness from Wardell Stephen Curry II. I can't stress to you enough how incredible this Game 4 performance was for Steph, as with all the switchable big men and length he's going up against on the Boston Celtics, with Draymond Green being ineffective, Klay Thompson struggling, just like Curry said post-game in his courtside interview, the Warriors can play a lot better. The Boston Celtics, meanwhile, went cold down the stretch, as after a flurry from Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum wasn't demanding the ball down the stretch as the dubs were top locking him and the Celtics superstar went silent after hitting a three to open the fourth. In the closing moments, Tatum has to be more aggressive. Golden State's increased pressure defensively forced Boston to turn the ball over 11 times in the opening half, which you can't do in a finals game and expect to win. At times, this Celtics team looks completely careless with the basketball, and that could ultimately assist the Warriors in resuming their dynasty. Boston will have to bounce back in a major way, because if you're on the Warriors' side here, there's an argument you could make that your team could have won every game of this series. In the finals outings that the Warriors have lost, firstly in Game 1, there was a dramatic Celtic comeback for the ages in the fourth quarter. In Game 3, Golden State went on a patented third quarter run to gain just their second lead of the night, but coughed it up. However, Boston wasn't able to recover from the two-way warrior flurry on Friday, as the momentum shifting plays from the man of the hour, Stephen Curry, with just a splice of help from Andrew Wiggins and Kevon Looney on the glass, who combined for 27 rebounds, with A. Wiggs grabbing 16 of those boards, that kept the dubs hanging around. Then, with no hesitation, and every bit of motivation he could muster up on a bad left ankle, Stephen Curry proceeded to utilize the stone-cold ice in his veins to empty the TD Garden in Boston with mind-boggling, highly contested deep-range bombs one after the other. Celtic defenders were draped all over Curry, and while Boston seems to have the better group overall, who fans from a neutral perspective would like to see win, we've known throughout these finals that Stephen Curry's been the best player in the series, and if he's able to take down a Celtics team that I claimed was generationally great in my last upload, he'll have officially proven not only the fact that he's the best player on earth, but the motto that winning in the NBA comes down to the team who has the better player with the right complementary pieces surrounding them. We'll get back to Curry, but as Steph would probably tell you himself, this wasn't 100% him. You have to give credit to the Warriors most valuable screen setter and biggest unsung hero in Kevon Looney, who now leads the 2022 NBA Finals in plus minus. Wiggins kept the dubs alive with his extra scoring early on. Maple Jordan had a tremendous finish going 100 miles per hour downhill in transition. I'm proud of my fellow Torontonian for coming through under pressure as well with some timely three-pointers. But most impressively for Andrew, it was the fact that he put up the first 15-point and 15-rebound game of these playoffs since Giannis in the second round. We'll go into the film room on Wiggins in the coming days on this channel. This man had an unbelievable showing. Before Game 4, I said in my Celtic upload to expect both Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole to play more motivated in this one, and that ended up being the case, as along with Wiggins, Jordan Poole's production seemed to arrive in this series. JP took some pressure off Steph by hitting several three-pointers off the dribble in the second queue, but Poole, along with most of the supporting cast around Steph, 
saw their production tail off down the stretch, but as the greats often do when their teammates are struggling, that's when Steph took his play to a whole different caliber. The film room is next, but the clips you're about to see ended up being a 43-point, 26-shot, 7-3-pointer, and 10-rebound, undeniable masterclass clinic put on from Curry. After a screen from Looney on the right wing, Derek White can't do a better job at flying over to contest this bomb, but Curry follows through and drains it with ease. Boston's hedging was working beautifully back in Game 3, but Tatum's late to get back right here after the underrated guard screen setter in Gary Payton sets the pick. Now that Curry has Tatum on his back, he can feel comfortable enough to execute his 1-2 step shooting motion and drain another distance dagger in traffic off the dribble and developed off a basic screen and roll, and Curry even wanted the 4 point play like Jalen Brown got earlier. After this drive, Curry dumps it off to Peyton in the corner, follows his pass and outruns Grant Williams, and slight screens from Kavon Looney and Gary Payton give Steph all the space in the world to line it up. Topping it off, following a big body from Kavon Looney on Marcus Smart, Curry gets the switch onto Robert Williams, blows right by him, and nails a teardrop. Next, after a nice bounce pass from Draymond, despite Derek White closing out like hell, somehow Curry stays poised enough to follow through and drain the shot. 